mind-blowing beauty standard in Africa. In this video today, we're going to be looking at some of the most mind-blowing beauty standards in Africa. Stay tuned to the end of this video and be guaranteed to have your mind blown. Also, before we begin, please click the subscribe button to be notified every day of new amazing content. Regardless of race, culture or gender, the subject of beauty is important to many people. In terms of attractiveness as a social construct, social studies scholars believe that different standards of beauty are linked to the traditions and beliefs of each culture. In America, for example, youthfulness is the beauty ideal, whereas in Europe, innately flawless skin is the beauty standard. Natural and kinky hair, dark skin and figure eight shaped girls are considered attractive in Africa. Plaid lips and bean tattoos are unusual standards of beauty and marriage eligibility in some parts of Africa. These are some of the most iconic beauty standards in Africa. Mercy and Soma The lip plate, also identified as a lip plug or lip disc, is a type of body modification practiced by Ethiopia's Mercy and Soma tribes, Chad Sara tribe, Tanzania's Makonde tribe, and Brazil's Suyamen. From a young age, a hole is drilled into the lower or upper lip of the tribe's members, and as time passes, larger plates are inserted. The larger the plates, the more beautiful you are thought to be. Most of these tribes have been rejecting the extraordinary beauty standards for decades. The Soma people are divided into three ethnicities, the Mercy, the Suri, and the Meccan. Suri and Mercy cultures are very similar. The size of their women's lip plates determines their beauty. It is unknown how this custom came to be. According to one theory, lip plating began as a deliberate disfigurement intended to make women and young girls less appealing to slave traders. According to some researchers, the size of the lip plate, that is, the larger the better, was a sign of social status or wealth within the tribe. The wearing of a lip plate is associated with a female's fertility and marriage eligibility. As an important part of their culture, the plates represent great beauty and serve as a commitment to the husband, as they are one with pride when serving him meals. The woman may later remove them as she ages, and if her husband dies, the lip plate is eliminated because a woman's exterior beauty is set to fade after his death. Furthermore, the plate serves as a powerful visual marker of mercy identity. Without it, they risk being misidentified as a member of another tribal group. Young Mercy men compete in the Donga battle to prove their worth to their future wives. The Umoga dwelling kit is won by the contestants. This serves as both a protective and decorative item. The Ashin guards are made of animal skins such as leopard and tiger. The Makonde tribe other beauty standards are now prohibited in some African countries. Mozambique's Makonde tribe is well known for their primitive tattoos done with crude methods. Dinembo design is the general Makonde term for tattoo, and the tattooing process typically required one to three sessions with the Mpundiwa Dinembo, tattoo design artist, to achieve the desired result. If a clan had light skin, one visit to the tattooist was usually sufficient, but clans with darker complexions required multiple visits. Makonde tattoos have traditionally been considered regional indicators, with each tribe preferring specific patterns that were set down in a wide range of set patterns. These patterns have largely survived to the present day, but they only appear on men and women over the age of 60. Unfortunately, the Makonde tattooists of the Mueda Plateau stopped inking their customers in the early 1960s, and only a few elderly tattoo masters remain in northern Mozambique today. Sacred antelope, nandolo, spiders, lidangadanga, and even eucharoot bundles, nka, were common decorative motifs that may have had magical associations in the past. Makonde women still believe that tattoos on their abdomen, mankani, and inner thighs, nchika, are erotic and have the supernatural power to attract a husband. 
Himba people As the world progresses through modernization and migration, much of its history and culture is lost. However, there is still hope because certain cultures have found ways to preserve their history through oral traditions, written accounts and cultural practices passed down through generations, such as Odjize and Himba people's Red Miracle Paste. The Himba people are an indigenous African ethnic group with a population of 50,000 people who live in present-day northern Namibia. The Himba tribe, a nomadic tribe, is frequently referred to as Namibia's last nomadic people. They count their riches in the number of livestock owned. The Himba women, known for their red clay skin and hair, have been photographed and depicted as iconic image of African tribes. Otijze, the Himba women's red beauty paste is responsible for their skin's distinctive red color, earning them the moniker, Red People of Africa. Ojidze, a combination of butter and ochre, gives their skin a deep reddish tinge and is regarded as the Himba people's ideal beauty standard. The main ingredient in this reddish tinge is ochre, a natural red clay pigment composed of ferric oxide, clay and sand. Ojidze is extremely important to the Himba people, representing the earth's rich red color, blood and the essence of life. The Himba use this clay red ojidze in their hair, which is left long and intricately plaited with the addition of goat hair for fashion. From puberty, Himba women start using this paste to style their hair because it is scented with the aromatic raisin Omuzumba, Comifora multijuga. The Himba people have described the use of ojidze as purely aesthetic, a traditional makeup applied exclusively by the women. It is thought to have started as a way to protect their skin from sunlight and ward off insects. Because they live in a desert environment, Ojize also has hygienic benefits because when it flakes off, it removes skin and dirt. The Himba people also wash their hair with wood ash. The Himba women take a smoke bath in the fragrant resin before moisturizing with the mixture of herbs and ochre to start the day by leathering their bodies in Ojize. This all-natural mixture shields their skin from the elements, stops the growth of body hair, and repels mosquitoes. For the Himba people, hair is extremely important. Long, thick strands are seen as a testament to a woman's capacity for procreation and are regarded as a symbol of fertility. Because of this, the typical Himba woman spends a lot of time dressing herself and engaging in other rituals of personal grooming. As they transition through puberty and find their place in society after marriage, each hairstyle has a unique story to tell. These collectively created symbolic hairstyles require the use of goat hair, synthetic extensions, woven hay, and other materials. The Maasai We should start by answering the key question, who are the Maasai? The Maasai are a group of 16 ethnic groups that live in Kenya and Tanzania and are considered to be nomadic people. The nomadic lifestyle they've maintained since the beginning has theoretically dwindled in recent decades due to modern influences. You could estimate that there are between 500,000 and 1 million Maasai, a wide range given their mistrust of census takers. From the perspective of physical modification, the Maasai are most notable for stretching their lobes. Sometimes it's one lobe, other times it's both. The lobe is stretched to a size where it can frequently be lobed over the top of the ear. They occasionally wear plaques, but more frequently for important events, they wrap their lobes in beads or suspend a beaded weight from them. The actual stretching is frequently done with wood, occasionally with something resembling a bundle of twigs and occasionally with empty film canisters. A part of the ear may occasionally be removed as well, which makes the stretch lobe appear even more dramatic. Astute body mode observers will notice. The helix or rim of the ear, where beaded wire or string is frequently looped, is the other significant piercing. These beaded loops will sway to the beat of the music during dances. 
Tribal elders have engaged in conflict over piercings in recent years, with some groups making an argument that the traditional piercings are good for tourism. You can visit a Maasai village directly if you want to. And other groups contending that the piercings set the Maasai apart and make it more difficult for them to obtain office and government jobs. Many young Maasai people already avoid getting pierced and prefer to lead modern lives, especially young men. However, you also see a lot of them sporting cool plugs, such as those available for purchase on websites like Body Art Forms. I hope you liked today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on amazing and quality content in the future. That being said, I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys!